Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be helping a supporter of the channel in creating this object. Now for me if I'm looking at this object I can see it's quite simple because we have two profiles, two main profiles. So if I look from this side I'm looking for near to planar profiles as possible so all along the same plane. This profile here going this way if I simplified it and come out here and squared this curve off, it's actual planar along here. If I look from the top, and though this is not a planar profile, I can utilize both of these profiles, this side and the top, in something called an intersection workflow or a common workflow. And I'm going to be going into how to break down objects in the future in my channel because it's a very important skill to have and it gets you that little bit further in your learning. So with this object, if we look at it from the top, I've got this profile. So what I'm going to do is sketch that profile. It's not planar, but I'm gonna sketch it as a planar profile. So we need a sketch, make sure that nothing's selected. And I'm gonna place this upon the X and Z plane. I'm using the STL that's been passed over to me as guidance. So from here, I'm going to use straight lines first. So I'm gonna place a straight line across here. And I could have used the polyline, but let's carry on with this. And let's pull in a straight line here. This has got some curvature here, which I'm gonna leave for a second. And I'm gonna place a straight line in here. We've got all those there. Let's place an arc in here. So I'm gonna use the rim point and end point arc from the drop down and place an arc between these two and bring this out. So we've got that coming around there. Last thing I want is an arc. So I've still got the arc tool between these two points. And we'll place some arc in there. May want some tangency across here. Taking those two, making the tangent and OK, and perhaps some tangency across these two. Using the tangency and OK that. So it makes my life easier if I place the lines in first and then the arc between those lines. Otherwise, we're going to start pulling these arcs out, etc. I can fully constrain this, but I'm moving quickly through this. At the same time, I'm going to place some holes in here. Let's bring these in. I'm not sure what size these are, but I can set the size if I want. And some more. And we'll just place these here. Get yeah, skate to the mouse pointer back. Take the points of the center of the arcs and place them in line. And I'm going to take all of these and make those equal. If you're wondering about the size of my screen and it looks different from all the other videos, I'm actually running on a Windows machine at the moment. I'm away from my office and I'm just using the Windows machine of where I'm staying to get this correct. So I've got that in there. So that's close. So we've got our first profile that sits along the bottom. Let's come around to the top and I'm going to sketch in this profile now. And I'm going to just basically sketch what I see. So new sketch, making sure nothing's selected from the top X, Y plane and hit OK. And I may want to come over to the model and click, let's click on the helix and transform that and bring this down the helix support. I'm not quite sure what this is. So I'm just going to bring this down a bit. I may want to change translation increments. Let's bring this down to 0.5 of a millimeter. And then I can move this a bit more accuracy. That's okay there. I can come into the helix support and change the placement and move it along the position. So minus 1.5, something like that. So I've got that into position. Come back to that sketch. And that sketch this. And let's use a polyline. And I'm going to come down to here, just sketching this in quickly, up to the top. 
across and hit escape and we'll come back to this point notice that when i hover over this i've got the constraint kicking in which if we come over to the constraints and use this drop down you can see i've got the auto constraints on and also the auto remove redundance so connect up to this point come over to here hit escape hit escape again that's put some horizontal constraint in here zoom in this one here use a horizontal constraint and we'll just tweak this into position. I'm looking for the bottom of the arc. So the bottom of the arc's here and we'll place, it's going to be a line and an arc, I believe. So let's place the arc in, end point and rim point arc. And what we do, we just come up at that angle and try to find the end of that arc, which is about there and just bring this in like so. Take this line and this arc, and we'll create some tangency. So tangency constraint across those. Okay on that. And finally a line from this point to this point, like so. And again, the arc and the line, and add some tangency in there. And we're gonna have to tweak this into position. and take this point and just pull this in. So this is where that we should start to constrain it down because it makes our life easier. So I'm just putting that into position just to move quickly through this. So we have, if I click on this and press the space bar, we got two different profiles. Now, one thing to remember is that these profiles, the ends of these profiles have to join up to make for a good intersection between those. So what I'm going to do is let's click on our last sketch and have a look to see how that's joining up there. So I believe this arc is along this line. So I've got this line here this vertical axis let's close that and go back to our original sketch and no it's not that vertical axis so i'm going to take that curve and this axis and use the tangency so that should be all joined up there let's look at the other side and we can see that point there and this line. So I may want to pull in some geometry. Let's go back to that in a second. Let's use the external geometry tool and pull in this. And yeah, they are close, but they're not on top of each other. So I'm going to take these two points. So this is the point that I've pulled in from here and this point and create a coincident constraint. So that is in line with this, which is good. So we've got two profiles ready for a strewd. Take the first profile and we need to be in the part because so we're using part workflow. We can use part design if we wanted to, but we're gonna have to use something like a Boolean in there with two separate bodies or something called an inverse or reverse pocket, which I've gone into in other videos. But what we're going to do is take that sketch, use the extrude, and we're going to extrude this, which is actually going to be the whole length of this. So all the way up to the top here. Let's place in 10 millimeters for the time being. That's okay that. It's gone the wrong direction. So click on the extrude, come down the length forward is 10 mil. And let's just place a minus in there and hit enter. So at the moment, if I look at that, well, it's not gone all the way up to the top and it can go past. So let's click on that and let's go 20 mil. Remember we're making an intersection. And if I click on this sketch and do the same, the extrude, we're going in the Z direction. So this is going to be 10 mil let's go 20 mil as well. So we want to go past 
this object. Let's go a bit further. Let's just place in 30. So that's gone past that object. And now we can create our intersection between these. And that's a case of just taking one object, control clicking the other, coming out to part, and we're looking for the Boolean operations of an intersection. It's also known as a common. So when we create the intersection, this is what we get. And you can see, well, we've got this helix support. Now, if I click on one, press the space bar, you can see we've got that support. I notice that it looks like the holes are at different angles. I'm not sure if that matters, but we can use if we wanted to, because this is a planar surface. Let's click on that, press the space bar, bring back the common. We can just get rid of these holes and create an extrude at an angle going through here and boolean those out if we wanted to. So remember that profile can be modified in whatever way you want. For instance, I've changed the profile here and what I've done is created a sketch that is basically a mirror. So if I double click on that sketch, you can see that if we look at this, it's going across this horizontal line and all I've done is mirrored the top to the bottom to create this profile. Look on the top, you can see that profile there. Let's close that. And what I'll do is hide this sketch and show you the extrude. So that's the extrude. We've got the original extrude that goes through the top. You see how these are kept in line. The edges are kept in line here. So when we look from the top, you can see how those are in line there which means that when we do the intersection, so let's hide those, hide the extrude and the other extrude and bring back the common, we get the profile going across there. Obviously we need to constrain that down to get the right measurements, but this shows you how flexible this workflow is. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.